My name's Ken Harwood, and I'm with CR England Safety Department. And today, I'd like to talk to you about backing. Let's face it, backing a 53-foot trailer into tight spots safely on a daily basis is a risky proposition at best. And it's going to take time and practice for you to perfect the skills necessary to do this safely. So today, I'd like to show you some of CR England's safe backing techniques that you can use and help you get in and out of these tight spots. But first, there are some rules that we need to follow, and these will help keep you safe. A pull-through spot should always be your first choice, but if you have to back, choose your spot wisely. The wider, the better. Stay off the end of a row. If it's tight, use extra caution. Stop. Get out and look as many times as necessary. And remember this rule. If you lose sight of your tandems or any reference point, stop. Take a direct look. Use low gear when you're setting up. Throttle is not necessary. Idle the engine, cover the brake. So if you follow these safe backing techniques, you can get in and out of these spots that we face safely. So enough talk. Let's go get in the truck and do some backing. All right, today we're gonna do a straight line. A good back starts with a good setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is set it up. I'm gonna stay about, I don't know, about four feet out in front of these trailers. I've chosen my spot. It's between these two trailers. I'll be pulling right across the front of these trailers about four feet out at approximately a 90 degree angle. Now I'm gonna choose my stop reference. There's the center of the target zone I'm gonna back into. I need to put my tractor drive tires pretty much in the center of that spot so that when I pull out, my trailer is going to be centered in the spot I'm gonna back into. So I'm gonna stop right now and get out and look. Oh yeah, and when I get out, I'm gonna use three points of contact. Here's another reference that I use when I get out of the truck. That door is approximately four feet long. So if I don't come up against the trailer I'm next to, I'm okay. Okay, now that I've stopped, I'm going to come into the target space that I'm backing into, take a look at the dock, make sure it's clear, and I'm looking at my tractor drive tires to make sure they're relatively centered in this zone I'm going to be backing into, so now I can get back in the truck and start my pull-up. Now I'm going to do the pull-up. This is the second step. So I'm going to go down to the low gear, release my brakes. I'm going to turn all the way to the stop or the lock of the steering away from the space and I'm going to pull forward and away till I'm almost straight away from the space. I'm going to watch my tandems in the small mirror, the spot mirror or the convex mirror and I'm going to watch them come to the edge of that mirror till they almost disappear and then I'm going to stop and I'll tell you why. Here we go. And holding the steering wheel all the way to the lock, watching my header, back to my tandems, watching in front, alongside, and behind. Yeah, I'm nervous when I'm doing this, because a lot can happen in a real short amount of time. Okay, I'm watching my tandems right there. They've all but disappeared. And I'm actually turned a little bit beyond that reference point across the lot. You know why? because I need to put my tandems in the center of that space before I serpentine back to straight. And I've done that. My reference point is my trailer tandems, and they're all but disappeared from the small mirror. The reason I stop is my cab extenders are getting close to the trailer. If you continue turning this sharp on a full jackknife, you'll hit your cab extenders. So remember that. That's why we're gonna stop and take a look. Now I'm gonna continue to pull forward straightening out and turning back towards that reference point that I picked across the lot, that purple truck. I'm looking in my mirrors and I'm looking into the space behind me and I'm watching for gap and there it is. I have gap on both sides. I can see right into the space. I'm a little bit wider on this side than that. So I'm gonna pull over and close the gap with a little serpentine. 
The forward serpentine has three steps. First step, turn towards the gap to close the gap. Turn away from the gap to square the trailer and turn back towards the gap to straighten the tractor. There it is. Straight, square, right out in front of the space. Stop. Start to back, straight back. Watching my tandems in the small mirror. They appear in this mirror. I turn towards the problem to straighten. I see them a little more on this side. I turn towards the problem to straighten out. Turn towards the problem. Back towards the problem. I'm just doing minor adjustments. If I needed to do a major change in position or a major correction, I would do that with a pull-up. Here we come into the space. I'm centered between the lines. I'm very pleased with this position. Come all the way into the back of the space, the target zone that I'm backing into, and stop and set my brakes. If that seemed easy, it's because if you do it the right way, it can be safe and easy, done in three compact maneuvers. Straight line, love it. Now we're going to do an alley dock. Just like the straight line, everything starts with your approach and your setup. So my initial approach, I came up about four feet away from those trailers parked here, a 90 degree angle along the front side. I've stopped, I've shifted down into low gear. I've got both my windows open so I can hear what's going on around me. There's my target zone. I've chosen the space I'm going to back into. The setup's virtually the same. I come up and I want to put my tractor drive tires pretty much in the center of that spot, that zone that I want to back into. So I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to get out and look. And you know when you open the door, if it doesn't touch that trailer, that's about four feet. Oh yeah, and I'm going to use three points of contact when I get out. My setup's good. My drive tires and my fifth wheel are pretty much in the center of that target zone that I want to back into. I'm going to turn my steering wheel all the way away from the space. And I've chosen a distant object across the yard. In this case, it's that purple bobtail sitting over there. I'm just going to pull forward until I'm pointing pretty much straight away to that purple tra tractor across the way. I'm also looking at my tandems in a spot, right about there. In my spot mirror, my tandems are about, I don't know, an inch from the edge of the mirror. What that does is when I pull forward like this, it gives me room for trailer tail swing, so that that trailer, as I pivot, doesn't hit those trailers that are parked next to where I want to back in. Next move, back towards the target where I want to back in, all the way to the lock, full lock, and pull forward. And I'm just going to hold this position until I see my tandems appear in the mirror. And there they are. And I'm looking in my mirror and I'm lining the corner of my trailer up with those boundary markers, those yellow lines, that's a reference point that I'm using. That defines the outside edge of that target space I'm going to back into. And I'm going to pull up. Now, this, is a, this is a guess. So how do you check your work? <laughs> you stop, get out, and again, I'm going to take another direct look. Okay, what I'm checking for is that the corner of my trailer is almost lined up with that boundary line. The reason I do that is I need to be far enough forward to give that trailer room to pivot. Trailer pivots between the tandems on the pivot point and the 10 foot rule comes into play here. One revolution of that tire, that 22.5 tire, that trailer's gonna move 10 feet. 
So I've got to have room to maneuver, and I'm going to start to pivot. So what I'm going to do when I get back in the truck is I'm going to turn that steering wheel to a hard lock and start to pivot and push those tandems into the spot. When I feel the tandems have crossed onto that boundary line, I'm going to stop that pivot, and then I'm going to square the trailer with the space. And I'm actually going to square it a little bit beyond square because of that first pull-up I do will straighten it out. And if you push it beyond square, it'll straighten out quicker. Let's go do it. I love this part. We've done the setup, we've done the pull up, and now we're gonna back up and square the trailer up with the space. And simply put, I'm gonna turn the steering wheel all the way away from the space, from the tandem that I see in the mirror, and I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna go full lock, and I'm gonna hold it. Here we go. Just feathering the clutch, letting the truck idle. I'm watching the tandems as they start to slow down. When the tandems stop, I have to make a choice. I have to stop and make sure that my cab extenders aren't getting too close, I'm okay. And just continue to back up until I've got a square trailer with the space. I want to back up, not in. Now it's time to stop, get out and look, take a direct look. Oh yeah, I like it. Tannins inside the space, pushed it just beyond square. My first pull up, it's gonna straighten right up, it's gonna work great. Let's go do the switch back four by four pull-ups, because right now we're on a 90 degree angle, and we have to put that tractor back in front of the trailer. How do we do that? Switch back, switch back, pull up, back up, series of pull-ups and back-ups. Put the tractor back out in front of the trailer for our final back, which is gonna be a straight line into the space. All right. Okay, now I'm gonna start my backup. Gonna bring it back a little bit and then initiate pivot to a full lock. I'm gonna let it pivot, watch the tandems roll, roll them into position. When they're into the space, I'm gonna stop them. Center the trailer with the space, right about there on the boundary line. Do the four by four series of pull-ups, the switchback, whichever you prefer by any name, I don't care, as long as you understand the technique. It's a series of pull-ups and back-ups of a measured amount, about 10 feet, that will square and straighten the tractor with the trailer. I'm going to pull up, not out, and I'm going to back up, but not in. Bring it back, re-square it again, back, but not all the way in. I'm going to do another 4x4. Four four. Little serpentine. Use all the moves that we teach you, if you got the room. And my final back. Little steering input. Have a gap on both sides. can see the boundary lines. My tandems are in the boundary. Have gap, have sight, and back it into the parking spot. All right, well that's gonna be it for today, the backing uh, instruction I gave you. I hope you can use it. So just remember the five basic steps. A good result starts with a good setup. Pull up, know where to stop, check your stop reference, then pull up. Square up the trailer with the space before you enter the space, that's key. 
Then once you've squared your trailer, before entering the space, straighten the tractor up with your square trailer by using the switchback or 4x4 maneuver. I don't care what you call it as long as you know how to do it. It's a series of pull-ups and back-ups, switching direction, starting out going forward, then reversing direction, and putting the tractor back in front of the trailer. So we pull up, not out, back, not in. Once you've got that position, you have gap on both sides, do your final back, straight line it back in, and, and you know what, if you follow these guidelines, you too can back safe every day. So thanks for your, your attention, and until next time, be safe.